Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Watson, and in this video I'm going to be giving you an overview of the plot of J.B. Priestley's An Inspector Calls. Now, this is a GCSE exam text, so if you are studying it, it's really important that you know the story as well as you possibly can, so hopefully this video will help you with that. Of course, because I will be talking about the story, there will be spoilers, so if you've just started studying it and you don't want anything ruined for you, it might be a good idea to come back to this video at a later stage if you have any misunderstandings or you need anything clearing up. But, for everybody else, let's get on with it. So, to begin with, I'm going to talk through the different characters so that we know who's who. We've got the Berlin family, and they are an upper middle class family, and they are headed by Mr. Arthur Berlin. He is a self-proclaimed hard-headed businessman, and he's married to Mrs. Sybil Berlin who is rather snobbish and cold-hearted. They have a daughter called Sheila. She's in her 20s, and at the beginning of the play, she is celebrating her engagement. Sheila has a brother called Eric. He's also in his early 20s. He lacks confidence, and it's revealed later on in the play that he actually has a drinking problem as well. Gerald, Gerald Croft, is described as an attractive chap who is about 30 years old. He's engaged to Sheila, and this is something that Mr. Berlin is absolutely thrilled about because Gerald's family are upper-class business owners. Of course, we have the inspector, Inspector Ghoul. He is a mysterious character who is assertive and very knowledgeable. He arrives at the Berlin household at the beginning of the play to investigate the death of Eva Smith, who is also referred to as Daisy Renton after she changes her name partway through the story. Now she is a young working class girl who interestingly we never actually see in the play. She's just referred to by the other characters. However, she is an essential part of the story because it's her death at the beginning which leads the inspector to the Burling's house. Okay. So the play begins at some point in the spring of 1912 in the town of Brumley, which is in England. We're introduced to the Berlins whilst they are celebrating Sheila's engagement to Gerald. Everybody is rather pleased with themselves, completely unaware of the fact that everything is about to change for them. Mr. Berlin makes a lengthy speech that goes from congratulating the happy couple to then talking about the state of the nation. He confidently makes some interesting predictions first of all about prosperity in the country, and then about the Titanic, which he deems to be absolutely unsinkable, which of course, now we know what happened to the Titanic, makes him look a bit daft. The men all go off and have a chat about business, in which Mr. Berlin talks about how every man must look after himself and his own, before he is interrupted by the sharp ringing of a doorbell. Now this moment marks Inspector Gould's arrival. The inspector introduces himself to Mr. Berlin, who is actually quite surprised at the fact that he doesn't recognise the inspector because he prides himself on knowing the Brumley police force fairly well. The inspector explains that he is there to investigate the suicide of a girl who died two hours earlier in the infirmary by drinking disinfectant. The girl is Eva Smith and the inspector shows a photograph at this point to Mr. Berlin, but to nobody else. It's revealed that Eva had worked for Mr. Berlin a couple of years earlier, and that he had fired her after she'd helped to lead a strike, demanding better pay for the workers. The inspector explains that this moment began the chain of events which ultimately led Eva to her death, although Mr. Berlin refuses to believe that he is in any way responsible. We then learn that Sheila also encountered Eva while she was working in a new position at a clothing store called Millwoods. Sheila was jealous of Eva and used her influence to have her fired from the store. It's clear that Sheila feels incredibly guilty about this because she does get very upset when she realises what she's done. The inspector then explains that Eva decided to change her name to Daisy Renton, most likely to signal a fresh start, and it's under this new name that she encounters Gerald, who had a secret affair with her. He let her stay in a cottage that he was looking after, 
He gave her lots of money. However, after a while, Gerald decided to end their relationship, which devastated Daisy, who had strong feelings for him. Now, Sheila had already had her suspicions that Gerald had had an affair because he'd spent a lot of the previous summer away from her. And ultimately, as a result of this revelation, she decides to give the engagement ring back to Gerald. The inspector then turns his attention to Mrs. Berlin, and it's revealed that Daisy, who was pregnant at this point, went to Mrs. Berlin's charity to ask for financial support. Mrs. Berlin used her influence and power to persuade the charity to refuse to help Daisy. The inspector presses Mrs. Berlin further, but she refuses to accept any responsibility whatsoever, passionately asserting that she believes that the person who was truly responsible was the father of the child and that the inspector should be looking for him instead. Seconds later, it's revealed in the climactic moment of the play that the father of Daisy's child, the father who Mrs. Berlin believes should accept complete responsibility for what happened to her, is in fact Mrs. Berlin's only son, Eric. <laughs> right? Who just so happens to walk in through the door at that very moment. Now, the inspector turns his attention to Eric, who reveals that he met Daisy in a bar. After this meeting, and whilst he was drunk, he forced his way into Daisy's room and had sex with her. He also explains that he gave her money that he stole from his father's business. However, after a while, Daisy ended the relationship with Eric because she believed that he did not love her. The inspector makes a grand final speech, explaining that there are millions and millions and millions of Eva Smiths and John Smiths who still need help. He also explains that we are all responsible for each other and that those who do not learn that lesson will be taught it in fire, blood and anguish. And with that, the inspector leaves. Initially, after the inspector's left, the Berlins begin to fight amongst themselves. Sheila and Eric, the younger characters, feel guilty about the part they played in Eva's death, whereas the others fear a public scandal once the news gets out. However, it's then suggested that Inspector Ghoul may not have been a real police inspector after all, and Mr. Berlin calls the police constable to clarify this, and interestingly, the police constable claims to not know an Inspector Ghoul. Gerald then offers the idea that Eva Smith may not have been just one girl, and that the inspector was actually talking about a few different girls that the different members of the family had come across. He points to the fact that the inspector showed a photograph to each character, but only let that character see it in that moment. So he argues the fact that maybe it was a different photograph every time. So Gerald calls the infirmary and gives a description of Eva and the way she died. And the infirmary claim that nobody matching that description had been brought in that night. Despite this, Sheila and Eric still feel guilty for what they did even if it wasn't to the same girl, to which Mr. Berlin, Mrs. Berlin and Gerald dismiss and laugh off, with Mr. Berlin proclaiming the famous younger generation and they can't even take a joke. It's while Mr. Berlin is mocking his children that the phone rings. Mr. Berlin answers it and his merry mood quickly turns to shock. He tells the other characters once he gets off the phone, that was the police. A girl has just died on her way to the infirmary after swallowing some disinfectant. And a police inspector is on his way here to ask some questions. Okay, so that is the plot of An Inspector Calls. I hope it was useful for you. I'll probably do some more videos on An Inspector Calls at some point, looking at themes, looking at key quotations, maybe even delving into each character individually. Um, but for now, see you next time.